and welcome to Database Management Systems. I'm Javita Christie, and in this video, I'm going to explain to you data models like network model, and then we're going to see some very basic things about ER model, like entity sets, relationship sets, and attributes. So first we'll begin with the network model, and it looks something like this. What you see here in the diagram is the network model. And as you can see, there is employee one, two, three, and then there's a department one, two, three. So these are all names of employees and um, names of departments, and they are just uh, connected with each other. So if, if an employee is connected with a department, you can say that that employee belongs to that department or is part of that department. So that is how a network model works. And you can only imagine what's going to happen if you had 100 employees and 100 departments. So maybe you had 1,000 employees and 100 departments. This would create a huge problem. So let's see a little bit more about it. So network model provides a flexible way of representing objects and their relationships. It allows each record to have multiple parent and child records forming a lattice structure. Any item is directly related to another item. It is slow, complex, and difficult to maintain. It requires a complex diagram to represent a database. So like I said, if you had 1,000 employees and you had 10 departments, um, you'd have to create a really huge diagram and show each of the thousand employees here. So that would create a little bit of a problem. So which is why we uh, tend not to use network model in day-to-day -day, uh, life when we want to represent a database. So one thing about it, the advantage is that it provides some flexibility. So there is a flexibility provided, which uh, allows you to connect anything with practically anything. So that's a good thing, but it's suited only if the diagram or the number of uh, entities inside are less. So let's start with another very important model, and that is the ER model. And in the ER model, the first thing that we're going to study is the entity sets. Now, you have two, two things in an ER model. You have entities and relationship. So that is why it is called ER model. So the first thing we are going to see is what are entity sets? So entity is a thing or an object in the real world that is distinguishable from all other objects. So that's basically an entity, a thing or an object that is distinguishable from all other objects and it has some properties. These properties allow you to identify an entity uniquely. And a set of entities is of the same type, which have the same property. Uh, they, they create an entity set. So in this case, what I'm going to tell you is, if, if you have uh, watched my previous video about relational model, then uh, which I'm also linking down below in case you you haven't watched. So in a relational model, we deal with tables. So an entity is uh, nothing but a table. And whatever columns you create in the table, uh, those columns are the properties or attributes of an entity. So for example, if you were in some sort of a university, then a person would be an entity and because because there are so many different types of people in the university and you can you can create a set of those and like for example you have students and you have professors so all those things together make an entity set the next thing in an er diagram or er model is the relationship set and what is a relationship a relationship is an association among several entities. And a relationship set is uh, a, a set of relationships of the same type. So you would say that if, if you had a student entity and you had a professor entity, then the relationship between them would be that of uh, teaching. For example, the, 
professor would be teaching a student. So that is called a relationship. So if you were talking about a relational model, then in the relational model, a relationship set would also be a table, but it would contain only the primary keys used as foreign keys into your table in order to represent the connection between two different uh, entity sets. And uh, you'll get to know more about it with examples. Now, the first type of relationship we're going to study is the recursive relationship, also known as the unary relationship. This is where the same entity participates in a relationship set more than once, but in different roles. And uh, an example is given right here. You have an entity set called course, and there is a relationship. Now, this is how you show it in a diagram. An entity is always shown as a rectangle, and a relationship is always shown as a rhombus or diamond. Now, what is happening here is you are having a, an entity set called course, and this stores all the different courses taught in a college or university. Now, from here, we are trying to create a relationship from one course to another course by saying that in order to do this course, that is written your course ID, in order to do this course, you require this course, that is the prerequisite ID. Just like in order to understand this video, you need to watch the previous video on relational model. So you can say that that is a prerequisite video. And in a similar manner, in order to study certain subjects, you require that you study some prerequisite subjects. So this is the same thing. It is a prerequisite relationship, which I have named prereq. So it is a relationship among the entities of the same set. And that is why it is a recursive relationship. What other kind of relationships you can have? You can have a binary relationship, as you can see here, between instructor entity set and student entity set. And the relationship is teachers. So because two entity sets are available, this is a binary relationship. And again, what this was, would look like in, in the form of tables is there would be an instructor table and there would be a student table. And then there would be a teacher's table, which would show the connection between instructor one with in, student one, instructor one with student two, and so on. So that is what a binary relationship is. And then just like that, you have a ternary relationship, which is between three entity sets. So as you can see, there are three sets here, instructor, project, and student. And there is a relationship between them called project underscore guide. What this means is there is uh, there's an instructor. Let's call him instructor one. So instructor one is associated with a student one and student one is working on a project one. So I'm just calling out the, the different uh, IDs of each one of them. So you can say that instructor one is associated with student one and then student one is associated with project one. And this relationship is shown inside this rhombus in between. That is what this rhombus shows you. So that's a ternary relationship and uh, you could go ahead and create a quaternary relationship, but we're not going to do that now. Now we are going to study the different types of attributes that are available to you in an ER model. Now what are attributes? Attributes are descriptive properties possessed by each member of an entity set. So like I said, all the entities have some properties and based on those properties, you would create an entity set. So you wouldn't create an entity set of, um, for example, um, uh, human beings and animals because they, they have some common properties, but they also have some properties which are not common. So uh, you wouldn't create also an entity set of human beings with chairs because chairs and human beings have completely different properties. So that is what, um, an entity set is it is based on the properties if properties are similar then you would create a set otherwise you'd put them into two different sets 
Now some property is given here. As you can see, I have an instructor and I have a student and I have not listed all the properties possible of, uh, of instructor and student, but I have listed some of them because my purpose here is to show you the different ways of representing attributes, the different symbols and shapes required. So I'm not showing you uh, everything, but I'm showing you only some properties. You can go ahead and add more. So this is an instructor and this is a student entity set. And in between there is a relationship called instructor teaches student. Always remember relationships are shown as rhombuses. And I find that many people often forget about the relationship and they just connect the line between instructor and student, which is wrong. In an ER diagram, you always need to connect two entities using a relationship set. You cannot connect it directly. So this is, this is the diagram and there are properties here. These are known as attributes. So ID is a property, name is a property, first name is a property. Uh, consider this as last name, that is also a property. Then student is having contact, birth, date of birth and age, those are properties. Uh, there's also a property at, attached with teachers, which is date. This is the date on which the instructor started teaching a particular student. Now let us see what, what are different types of attributes. The first one is the descriptive attribute. Uh, descriptive attributes are attributes um, of the relationship set. So you can see all these attributes are attached with the entity, these attributes as well as these, but the date attribute is attached with teachers. So what that means is you cannot attach it with the entities. The reason is you have all types of instructors here, okay? And you have all types of students here. Now, if I wanted to tell that this particular instructor started teaching this student on this date, then where would I put the date? Can I put it in the instructor table? It's not possible because one instructor is teaching many students. So how many dates would you put? And if you were to do the same thing for student, could you put the date inside the student relationship? Even that's not possible because the students also uh, have multiple instructors. So how many dates would you attach? which is why I have attached it with the teacher's relationship set. So teachers basically tells you that this instructor teaches the student and along with that we can add date. So whenever it's a descriptive attribute attached to a relationship set, we use a dashed line like this instead of a solid line. All these are solid lines, but this is a dashed line. So we use a dashed line in case of descriptive attributes. The next attributes are composite attributes, which can be divided into sub parts. And you can see very clearly those attributes are here. So there is name, which can be divided into first name and last name or two first names also. Some people have two, two first names. So this is what a composite attribute is. And this is what it looks like. You have an attribute and always remember that attributes are shown as ellipses like this. So it is an attribute and then it is further subdivided into these two. The next kinds of attributes are multi-valued attributes which can refer to more than one value. And they are represented in this manner. The way contact is represented with double ellipse. Why it is a multi-valued attribute? Because one student can have multiple contact numbers. So that is why it is a double ellipse. And then you have derived attributes. They are attributes whose value can be derived from the values of other related attributes. So example is here, there is date of birth and from the date of birth, you can find a person's age so age is a derived attribute and in order to show age which is a derived attribute we you we will use a dashed line uh, for the ellipse so remember that descriptive attributes use a dashed line here and derived attributes use dashed line for the ellipse 
and here it's a solid line connecting is done using a solid line that's it for today's video and i hope to see you in the next video thank you for watching